Not with our next guest, who I'm very excited to catch up with, though, for the next several minutes. And you guys have questions, pop them in the YouTube chat. And we thank you guys for the subscriptions and the love uh, early here this season. We have a lot of love for this next guy. He was a unanimous All-American at Notre Dame, seven-year linebacker for the Chargers and the Saints, who I love both of those teams. And he's a star of Netflix's Untold Documentary Series. Man, Titeo, how are you? Hi, Kay. How you doing? I'm so great. It's really it's great to talk to you. I can't wait to catch up. We're gonna break down some uh, I know. some football, but I think you've been hanging out with your your mini me Hiro uh, and Cairo, right? Like or yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Hito and Cairo, Cairo this, this entire time. Let's yeah. see. Can we see a picture? I think we have a picture. Tell me about being a dad. It's and it's it, the best thing ever. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll say that. I think nobody would know what true love is until you have children, and to have my daughter. Um, Hiromi and my, my son Cairo, it's it's definitely been the biggest blessing for me for sure. What's the what's the best part of being a dad? Um, just watching them grow up. I think now that I have two, to watch them play with each other, you know, my son is crawling around. They're they're actually the, the complete opposites of each other. My my daughter is very shy, uh, she's very loving. My son is very, very rough. And even though he's he's over a year younger than than my daughter, he's bigger than my daughter. Um is a lot tougher than my daughter, and uh, I'm excited for when they both grow up. But to see them play together, I think, is the best thing about being a dad. I love that. You guys can uh, hit your questions in the Up and Adam Show chat here. Um, I miss you on the field. I want to talk some football here. You were named a team captain back in 2016 with the Chargers, and then your season mm -hmm. ended after week three because you tore your Achilles. So obviously I want to mm -hmm. ask you about Aaron Rodgers. Same injury under the bright yeah. lights, all the pressure, all the hope of this franchise. Yeah. It was so difficult to watch. When you saw it happen, what were your thoughts? And give us some perspective on the rehab that goes into that. Right. Well, when I saw it happen, I remember initially they were saying it was an ankle injury. And the first thing that I looked at was his calf. And right when I saw his calf kind of vibrate a little bit, I immediately told my wife, I was like, it's not an ankle injury. That's, that's an Achilles. Because if it was an ankle injury, I know Aaron Rodgers would have got back up, probably hobbled a little bit got it taped up and went back in the game. But the fact that he sat right back down and had to have had to have people escort him off the field. And then you saw you, you saw the little trolley come out to come pick him up. I was like, yeah, that's that's no ankle ankle injury. But when it comes to the the rehab for an Achilles, it is probably one of the hardest rehabs because technology nowadays, when it comes to an ACL or any type of knee injury, by the time they're done, it's basically a brand new knee. Um, with an Achilles, they basically just take that the Achilles that just snapped into and they sew it back together. Oh. So it's 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 a it's a cat and mouse game where you can't you can't stretch it that much, but at the same time you want to have that flexibility there. Um, you have to kind of time everything up, and so I think it's very important. And I know Aaron will have those people around him that can help direct him of, of when to stretch his calf, when to stretch his Achilles, when to rest it, when to strengthen it. Um, but it's definitely one of those Achilles, one of those injuries that plays a lot of games with your mind. Jason Barrett had his Achilles done hmm. um, a few years ago, and I'm close with Jason. And he he reached out to me because he knew that I went through a similar injury. And I told him it's all in all in his mind. You know, just don't let his mind go to those dark places. And, you know, it'll be fine. It's just a matter of time. Well, that makes me feel better because I think Aaron Rodgers is like the perfect person. He doesn't really get down on stuff like that. He faces adversity like he's mm -hmm. sort of built for an uphill climb like that. But it'll be a lot worse. I mean, you were in your mid-20s when that happened. You did play 10 mm -hmm. games the next year after mm -hmm. recovering. But Aaron's 39 years old. Yeah. I, obviously, I'm not 39 yet. So, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be too sure about the age thing. I think it would be different for a person like Tom Brady and, and you know, a person like Aaron Rodgers, who I know, who I know they really look after their body and what they eat and, and how they train. Mm -hmm. So I think it's from case to case. Um, you know, I think like how you said, Aaron has that mentality. He has that spirituality aspect about him where he understands life from a different perspective, different than everybody else. He's very in tune with himself. And I think that's the thing about injuries is they, if you aren't already, they help you to be very, very accustomed and very in tune to how you're feeling, uh, your mental space, um, and what what it's going to take to get you back to being the best. And you know, Aaron was the best for a long time. And you know, I don't think this is. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that he's going to overcome, and it's going to be something that we don't really talk about for when he comes back and he does his thing. So I'm excited to see his his recovery and to see him come back. 
Now, Manti, elsewhere in the AFC, leading into week one, the game I was most excited to see, even though Bills and Jets were going to happen on Monday night, were the Chargers and the Dolphins. Yep. I just thought, mm -hmm. fireworks, we love Tua, statement game for Tua, that's yeah. fine. But on the all-LA side, who I mm -hmm. love, you know I love them, this was just <laughs> the craziest loss, okay? This is like a historic yeah. loss against them. They gave mm -hmm. up a franchise worst. 466 passing yards, okay? Yes. Coach Staley calls out the defense saying, man, this entire unit needs to step up. But I feel like this is Groundhog's Day. It's every year. This is the thing. Yeah. What can the defense fix where we will see results right now? Well, I, I think they have. They, the thing about the Chargers is we've always had the pieces in place, right? We've always had the, the talent. We always had talent across the board. We have Joey Bosa. We have Khalil Mack. We have... Derwin James, right? I think when it comes to certain teams, I like to look at it from a Bill Belichick perspective. Bill does a great job at taking your weapons away. And if you look at the Miami Dolphins, if you can't take number 10 away, it's it's going to be a long day. And the Chargers had a long day on Sunday. And I'm so I'm so proud of my little brother Tua. You know, he's he's got a lot of a lot of flack for a lot of things that I think are are totally unnecessary. His ability to throw the deep ball, his his ability to, you know, Ryan talked earlier about him coming, looking out of shape and all of that. Me knowing too, I knew that he he worked extremely hard this offseason. And Sunday, I think, was just, it, it, it was a demonstration of all the hard work that he put in and all the hard work that he's going to continue to put in, not only as a player, um, but as a leader for that team. And um, as far as the Chargers, guys, if we could have just taken away number 10, I think we would have stand, <laughs> we would have stood a bigger chance of just winning the game, you know. And so, um we have the pieces, you know, over there with the Chargers. We have the pieces offensively and defensively. Shout out to Tom Telesco. He's he's done a great job of building that team. Um, we just have okay. to figure out week to week what are the weapons, what are the people that can beat us, and choose to take them away, take those options away so that the, the offense or the defense has to use other weapons to beat us. How long have you known Tua? You said he's your little brother. I would love to know like a little yeah. bit more about what your relationship is with him um, and how far mm -hmm. back you guys go. So it's funny. When I first got into the NFL, um, there were stories about this young man named Tua Tango Vailoa who um, he was on the beach early in the morning with his dad during drills and people would come up to me and say, hey, you have to meet this kid. And I happened to meet Tua and his family and just to see the similarities between our upbringings. Uh, he's Samoan, I'm Samoan. He was born and raised in Hawaii. I was born and raised in Hawaii. And so um, just to see, you know, just again, the similarities between he and I and as our as our paths kind of continued, our paths crossed eventually. He was in the he was in the conversation for the Heisman in in in, in college at Alabama. He had a lot of success. Um, but he's somebody that I've, that I've connected with and he's somebody that I've, I've kind of taken into my, my family circle. Um, we call each other often. Mm. He'll call me almost every week just to say, what's up. Uh, he'll actually call me on Saturdays before games. Sometimes I think they played the Niners. Oh, before their Niners game last year, he called me the, the day before the game, just to talk story, just to say, what's up, see how the family's doing. I checked in on his family, um, how his mom and dad are doing. It's, it's just a big family. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with football. And that's what's so beautiful about those relationships that are so uh, independent of the game. Um, but to see him do his thing, to see him go out there and be electric, to see him just be unfazed by all the criticism, um, to go out there and just be a total beast was so, I was so happy to see that. Um, unfortunately, it had to happen against my Chargers. Um, but, <laughs> you know, for, 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 for me to see him do it, I was so happy for him and his family. I love hearing that. What do you make of how he's been with the media? You, of course, have a complicated relationship with the media, but to yeah. a, a lot of people are surprised. A lot of people are yeah. supporting him, but hanging on to how he's he's just not having it this year. You know, I love yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I, I love it because it's 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 giving people more color of Tua. You know, Tua's not trying to be the politician. Tua's not trying to be um, the franchise quarterback for the NFL. Tua's going to be Tua. And I love that he's getting that scrappiness about him. Um, and that's something that it's 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 good to see somebody in that light be human, um, to be able to see criticism affect him a little bit, but then to see him respond on the way that he's responding, not only behind the podium, but more importantly, on the field. 
and he's continuing to do it, in my opinion, and with class, with poise. And I know that just how he's been raised by his parents, um, he's going to continue to represent his family, um, represent his culture, and represent everybody who he loves on um, the best way that he can. He is going to be human. Um, and I, again, like I said, I, I love that the criticism is kind of bringing that part of Tua out. I was going to say, so, so I, I, want to get, I want to make sure I have this clear. Tua mm -hmm. is, this is his reaction to criticism, or when you say Tua's going to Tua, is this something that he's had, like the kids say, that dog in him this whole time? Because a lot of people think yeah. he's quiet, similarly to Justin Herbert, and being quiet, reserved, a little bit more introverted. Like, tell yeah. me, you know Tua. Tell me who Tua yeah. is. No, 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 Tua, Tua got that dog in him now. <laughs> you know, he, he's got that dog. You don't, you, don't, you don't accomplish all the things that he's accomplished without having that dog in him. And it has a lot to do with Tua, but it has a lot to do with his father and how he raised Tua um, to be resilient. Tua's the oldest in his family. And, you know, for a lot of people that don't understand what being the oldest in a Samoan family means, you're basically like, there's your father and then there's you. Like, you're the next guy in line. So you are being molded since the day you were born to take over a family and to have that pressure, it just builds great greatness. And you see that in Tua. And I'm just so happy that Tua started to bring that, that, that feistiness out. Um, he also has that poise, which is needed to be a quarterback, which is needed to be a leader in his family, in his community. And so it's, it's just a beautiful thing to see him pick and choose when to let these different attributes and characteristics out that I know he has and that the world is starting to see. I love that. And he's got a big game this week. I pointed it out before you hopped on. He's taking on Bill Belichick, a really good defense, mm -hmm. as you know. Belichick mm -hmm. destroys young quarterbacks, but not Tua. We have it right here, mm -hmm. I think. Tua's 5-0 and against Bill Belichick, which is in rare air. Like, he's up there with the Peyton Mannings. He's right. mm -hmm. He gets one more. He's 5-0 and against <laughs> against him. So I'm sure you're wishing him luck. Do you think he can pull it off this week and go 2-0? I definitely think Tua. I'm always going to, I'm a, I'm a Tua fan. I'm a Tua believer. I'm always going to root for Tua um, just because of who he is and my relationship, relationship with him. And, you know, he's 4-0 against, you know, according to that graphic, um, I have no problem that he's going to go 5-0. I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult because, like I, I mentioned before, Bill Belichick will make sure that number 10 doesn't beat him. Yeah. Um, but the Miami Dolphins have so many different weapons out there. And, and the head coach does a great job in putting those weapons in different places and and helping them make plays. So I think it's going to be a great game, though. Um, two Alabama quarterbacks going back to back, facing off each other. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be it's, it's going to be a great atmosphere. It'll be a fun one. I wish you were there for that one. And of course, I just wanted to quickly say uh, thank you for all of the work you did in supporting Maui. And I know you worked with your Chargers on that. Uh, and you mm -hmm. mentioned Hawaii, of course, with your connection with Tua. So I just thought it was, I, we, we mm -hmm. all saw it and, and are help, trying to help support. We had Marcus Mariota on as well. And I know people are still really ravaged by what went on there. Yeah. And um, so the support by you was really huge. Now, you weren't just thank with you. the Chargers. And we're not just here to talk about Tua. Um, we got to talk about the Saints here for a little bit. And, yes. And I know that Sean Payton isn't there anymore. Uh -huh. But I got, you know, we're talking about guys that got that dog in him. Like he's got like a yeah. crazy dog. <laughs> and what's your best Sean Payton story? Um, so my best Sean Payton story, I, I would have to say, uh, was after uh, we won. I forget what game it was, um, but it's, it, it went viral. It was that little dance that he kept doing in the locker room. And usually Sean would let the boys, you know, after our game, we called it um, club. What we call it? Um, Florida Lee, I think club it was dub? called. Or club, oh, okay. I think club Florida Lee or whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, we was, was in there. The disco, you know, disco lights were going, and you know, it's usually like the players we get in a circle, we start dancing, having a great time. That's probably the one of the best memories of football is after a win. Um, but then Sean gets in there and he starts doing that little dance like that, right? And we're like, what is this <laughs> man doing? Um, but it goes viral. Um, he's just he's just somebody who's really unapologetic. Um, that's Sean Payton. Mm. Uh, he's he's he he he's he's unapologetically him, and it's it's yeah. it's something that separates him in a lot of ways. Um, he's such a brilliant mind um, for the offensive game, and and you saw you saw it with 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 the Saints. You know how he was able to put Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, all of these guys, Taysom Hill, the the, the Swiss Army knife, in different positions to make plays, and we we're just so lucky to have you know, one of the greatest of all time at, at quarterback in Drew Brees. 
Is he, is, does Sean have any soft side to him? With his kids, I would say. When, when, when he's around his kids, Cute. it's a different Sean Payton. Um, but when he's, when he's not with his kids, yeah, it's, you, you just gotta, he, he's like a father. You gotta figure out how he's feeling in the day. You know, you gotta figure out, okay, is dad, did dad come back from work mad or is he happy? And then based on how you see him interact with other people, you're like, okay, like he's cool today. Let's go talk to him. You know what I mean? So you, you gotta fill him out first. I think that's super accurate, and I would avoid him at all costs. Like, to me, I'm, I would just be like, oh, there's, he's walking over here with that clipboard. I'm going to go over here. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of the Saints, though, right? They're, they, it looks like the division could be theirs. New quarterback yes. in town, Derek Carr. He leads them to a win over the Titans mm -hmm. week one. They've got a nice little schedule, Panthers week mm -hmm. two. What is the ceiling for the Saints? I think the ceiling for the Saints is always high. I mean, you have Michael Thomas back. Hopefully, Mike can stay healthy. He hasn't been healthy in, in, in about two years, I think. Um, and now we have a quarterback like Derek Carr, I think, who is, is somebody that not only can manage the game, but that can win you a game. I think there are two different quarterback, two different types of quarterbacks. They're managers and winners. And, and Derek, D.C., he's one of those guys that I think can, can, can be that person for the New Orleans Saints. You have the Swiss Army Knife and Taysom. I'm so excited for week four when A.K. comes back. A.K. is, is one of my favorite running yeah. backs to watch. Um, I remember my rookie year, he put me in a blender in, in, in OTAs one time, and <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I'm never guarding this rookie again. You know, I was like, hey, give me the rookie. And then when he came out, ran his little pivot route, and I was in a blender, I was like, yeah, never give me the rookie again. So he was somebody who I knew was going to be special since the day that I that I met him. Unfortunately, it was that day at practice. Um, but I, <laughs> I can't wait to, to when he comes back in week four. Um, you have Chris Olave on the outside, just a, a spectacular athlete, fast in and out of the breaks, uh, in and out of the bricks, vertically fast, has great hands. You know, they are, they come from the Ohio State pedigree. Um, but I think it's a different, it's a totally different situation than the Chargers. Defensively, they have that identity, and they have that they had that identity for a long time. And when I played there, totally. it was this commitment to excellence. Now you have a guy like Demario Davis, um, who's just you want to talk about a leader. That's a leader. He's a leader on the football field. He's a leader in the locker room. He's a leader in the community. Um, you have Cam Jordan, who is one of my favorite humans of all time, uh, somebody who has that energy. He, he's one of those guys that he's, he's, he's a culture person. You know, Mark, uh, Mark Ingram was like that, too. There, there are certain pieces in the locker room that are culture pieces. And once you remove those culture pieces, your, your program goes through this transition process of trying to figure out what identity they now have. Um, Cam is right. one of those guys. And so you have him, you have Marshawn, and who I'm, in my opinion is the best cornerback in the league. Mar Marshawn, he's not scared of anybody. You talk about, you look up fearless in the dictionary, you'll see Marshawn's face. He, he follows the best receivers. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. He's not afraid to get physical. Um, over the years, you've seen he's got into a, a few bunch of a little scuffles there during the game just because he's so physical and he's not scared of anybody. He's going to continue to compete no matter what, what it is. But you look at that defense, top five in the past few years, and they're going to continue to be that. They're going to continue to do that. Last year was just all about what are we going to do offensively. Now we have a quarterback that can get the ball to the pieces that we want to get get them to. You have Chris Olave, who's going into his second year. He's a lot more comfortable. He seems to be the wide receiver one for, for them now. Now you have Mike Thomas coming back, who set records in 2000, what was it, 19K? Okay. You know what I mean? And so yeah. you have all of these pieces around there that, like, pick your poison. You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to stack the box when AK gets in the game? Good luck, because now you have Chris Olave, you have Mike. Well, the, que uh, the question is Derek Carr, and the question is Dennis Allen, right? Because they're loaded. Mm -hmm. So yeah, can they, well, the question, in the, there's a similar question with the Chargers. Can Brandon Staley yeah. get them there? Well, I think it's a different situation. Uh, with the Saints because the same offensive coaches for the most part are still there. Yeah. And so they still have that 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 system that was there when Sean was there and when, when Drew was there when they're 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 drawing up all of these plays for Taysom and drawing up all of these plays for AK and Mike Thomas and all of that. It's just it's just a different face now. Dennis, although he's the head coach, he's still yeah. the defensive mind. You know, so it, it there's there's more similarities there um, when I was when I was a saint 
than I would say for the Chargers. So I think they're they're a little they're they're a little different. I mean, but you play. I mean, you took on Dennis Allen, right, with the Raiders, and you took on Derek Carr in the mm-hmm. AFC West. Derek mm-hmm. Carr got it. I think Derek. I think Derek Carr has enough with the pieces around him to do it. Okay. You know, I when when when, when you have the the talent that the Saints have, you 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 just don't want to have somebody that's going to lose you the game. And DC is one of those guys that I don't think, um, watching his career, that he's going to lose that game. And if if ever they're put in that situation, Derek has, um, he'll step up and say it's his fault. You know, he's not somebody that's going to look <laughs> look to blame anybody. And I think that's a big thing in the leader. Um, he's a very spiritual person. He's 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 a, he's a devout Christian, and with with that comes a lot of poise. A lot of uh, reflection, mm-hmm. a lot of um, pers- uh, perspective um, that goes into um, being a leader of that type of team where there's so many different characters, there's so many different alphas um, that you have to be that guy to kind of come in there and just be that cool, calm, collected person that they can look to to say, OK, when 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 things start getting chaotic, whether it's in the game or at practice, we need you to be we need you to be the one to bring everybody down. And I think D.C. is that guy. It's really well said. I want to ask you about Notre Dame. Thank you for your NFL analysis. But uh, Mm -hmm. the Untold documentary, there's been a lot of Mm -hmm. praise for your part in this, especially, I mean, the series was really powerful. And you have a Mm -hmm. message about forgiveness. So what has it been Mm -hmm. like hearing sort of the empathetic, positive response? Well, it's been such a blessing, Kay, honestly. Um, But I think what has has been the most surprising for me um, is the reach that that documentary has had, the reach that that story has had, um, that there's been so many people around the world that have reached out that are, have gone through so many different things, um, that have been suicidal, that have had bouts of, of, of very, very dark, deep depression, um, and how my story has inspired them. And I never thought that that would have happened um, going into this project. Um, and so even more so now, I there's a responsibility that I have that I have to really um, carry this 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 flag, if 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 you could say it that way, where I could be an inspiration to people to just keep going, um, no matter what it is, just have some grace, be kind to others, you know. And I think the way that our our society is going, I think we could go, we could we could show a little mm. bit more love, we could show a little bit more kindness, we could show a little bit more understanding, um, and the more that we can come together as one, um, the better off we'll be. And I think if if I could just sprinkle a little bit more love and peace in this world. That's, I think that's the thing I'll be most happy about, but it's definitely been um, a blessing for me to see the positive impact that it's had. And, you know, if I, if, if I could wish for anything, that's what it would be. It's really, really beautifully said. And we're going to wrap it on Notre Dame because hopefully there's some positivity there as well. Number nine, <laughs> they've been crushing it. They've got a bit yes. of a packed schedule ahead though. If we look, they got yes. Ohio State, They've got mm-hmm. Caleb Williams, USC. What's the game that Manti Teo is circling on the calendar as a must-watch? And what's the ceiling on this squad? Well, the one that is a must-watch for sure is that Ohio State game. Um, I think that is something for Coach Marcus Freeman being an Ohio State alum. Um, it's, it's something that he's going to circle too. And so I'm definitely circle that game. For the Notre Dame Fighting Irish fans, I will be at the USC game. Um, and so I'm definitely always circling that one as well. But I think the ceiling is, is they, they have no ceiling. The ceiling is whatever they want it to be. I mean, I think that's that's been the thing for Notre Dame that we've always suffered from. Um, it's, we'll play so good against really good teams. I remember we, ble- we, we beat Clemson um, when nobody thought we were going to beat Clemson, but then we'll go and we'll lose. Hmm. Like we lost to, I think it was Tulsa my, my sophomore year, you know, and it's one of those things you look at it like, how can these two teams be the same team. Um, I think in order for Notre Dame to be where we need them to be, number one, follow coach Marcus Freeman. I am a firm believer, Kay, that every team is a reflection of their head coach. You look at the identity, you look at the toughness, you look at the resilience, you look at the culture. Mm -hmm. It's all a reflection of the head coach. And I am a big fan of coach Marcus Freeman. I love his, his values, his morals, what he's trying to do there with those young men on and off the football field. So I think, as they continue to embody his his outlook on football, his 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 character, who he is, I think we're going to be in a really good place. It's just a matter of time. We have a really good quarterback. 
who's who's had a lot of success in in uh, Wake Forest, I believe it was. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I I I think again, just like with the Saints, as long as you have somebody at the general position that can win you the games, that can be that that calm amongst the storm just when things right start getting here. chaotic. Yeah. Just stay right in the middle, whether it's high or low. He, he's that guy. That's all the best quarterbacks in the league have that ability, in, in my opinion, to be very, very poised individually and as a team. And I think we have that in in the quarterback that we have. I love estimating how he runs the ball. He's one of those old school. He reminds me of Jerome Bettis, just downhill bruiser. Um, but he once he gets into space, he has the ability to separate a little bit. We saw that in, in the past two games um, with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Again, I think the defense is, it, we're starting to figure it out a little bit. Um, we're starting to play more physical. And then I think as we bring those two worlds together, um, again, the sky's the limit for, for my team. I'm always going to, I'm in B, I'm in BYU country, Kay. I'm, I'm, I'm around U of U and BYU fans. I, I got to get my Notre Dame flag <laughs> out there, you know. Well, you, you go visit. Like you go visit a lot. You are still wrapped up <laughs> in the team. You're always representing that squad. That fan base loves you. It's so interesting, all the words and all the different— we've talked about so many different players from college to this. It's toughness. It's resilience. It's mental— um, uh, mental, I don't even know, like the vibes, like getting through things, forgiveness. It's all the things that, that you really have personified your entire career. You, like you were thrown Thank something you. nobody else has been thrown. You've been through this crazy whirlwind, undeserved, weird, mm-hmm. and you've made it on the other side, carrying that flag for being able to get over it, for being able to move past it. You're a dad. It's just been really lovely um, and a lot of really inspiring perspective to just uh, have here on a, on a Thursday morning. So thank you, Manti. Oh, thank you so much, Kay. It was, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And you're killing it with the analysis, by the way. So somebody come snatch up Manti Teo. All right, next up, uh, we appreciate him for joining us. A lot of love for the Chargers, the Saints, for our boy Tua. I learned a lot in that segment, and it doesn't stop there. Hamilton is here to give us a preview of how the Vikings will pull out all the stops on offense. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest Up and Adams content right on YouTube.